This is Novichok, the deadliest chemical weapon ever created. Just a trace amount, delivered as a liquid, a gas, or an ultra-fine powder, is potent enough to shut down your nervous system instantly. But it's not just its sheer toxicity that makes this nerve agent so lethal. It's its ability to go completely undetected. Why was this terrifying weapon developed? How exactly does it work? And just how deadly is it? During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union were in a constant race to outcompete each other on every front. Defense, spaceflight, nuclear weapons, and chemical warfare. At the time, there were already many powerful chemical weapons. Sarin gas, for example, was used in the infamous Tokyo subway attacks of 1995. VX was used to assassinate Kim Jong-nam of the North Korean Kim dynasty. These weapons, however, were far from perfect. They were unsafe to handle, useless against NATO protection gear, and chemical detection equipment could easily find them. So in the 1970s, Soviet scientists started the Foliant Program, a top-secret initiative to develop a new generation of chemical weapons, something even deadlier and harder to detect. In 1973, they synthesized the first versions of what would later be called Novichok, meaning newcomer in Russian. Two early variants, A230 and A232, were already the world's most advanced nerve agents. Designed to be undetectable by NATO sensors, resistant to standard protective gear, and stable as liquids, aerosols, or ultrafine powders, Novichoks could be weaponized for large-scale warfare in innumerable ways. And yet, the dose needed to eliminate their target was microscopic. By the late 80s, animal testing had confirmed Novichok's devastating effectiveness, and even more advanced forms were being developed for use in combat. Still, no one outside the Soviet Union knew it existed, until the Soviet Union collapsed. Whether you're directing a top-secret weapons program, or more realistically, just trying to keep your business on track, you need a streamlined way to stay on top of the work that matters. That's where Odoo Project Management comes in. Odoo is the ultimate project management software. Their intuitive interface helps you manage tasks, deadlines, and teams with tools like drag-and-drop Kanban boards, Gantt charts for scheduling, and real-time dashboards that show you exactly where things stand. You can set milestones, assign subtasks, and collaborate with clients all from one place. And the best part, Odoo's first app is free forever with unlimited users. No credit card, no trial period, just instant access. When you're ready to expand, Odoo has an entire suite of integrated business tools to make handling your sales, marketing, and operations effortless. One tool to start, a platform to grow. So when your business grows, Odoo grows with you. Try Odoo Project Management for free using the top link in the description below, or scan this QR code to get started. In 1992, Russia, newly formed and politically unstable, agreed to join the Chemical Weapons Convention, a treaty banning chemical weapons. They were desperate for international legitimacy, and by disarming, they could reintroduce themselves to the world not as a threat, but as a partner. However, just before they signed the CWC, two Russian scientists stepped forward and publicly revealed the Novichok program. Their timing was deliberate. They knew the Russian government wanted to avoid disclosing Novichok, and naturally, they denied everything, even its mere existence. And the world believed them, for now. Months later, Russia joined the CWC, but in the mid-1990s, German intelligence obtained a sample of Novichok from a Russian source. Tests in Sweden confirmed its authenticity, and the information was quietly shared across NATO. For years, though, nothing happened. According to the scientists who had exposed the Novichoks, 
The Soviet Union had developed them for warfare, but they were never actually used. At least, not for war. In 2015, a Bulgarian arms dealer, his son, and a colleague all fell violently ill. Doctors blamed pesticides, but surveillance evidence placed Russian intelligence agents at the scene. And years later, Novichok was identified as the poison. All of them survived. Let's get you a little bit more now on our main story. The suspected poisoning of a Russian double agent in Salisbury. Sky's Rebecca Williams has... In Salisbury, England, 2018, a former Russian spy and his daughter were found unconscious on a park bench, foaming at the mouth. Both of them survived, but investigators found that Russian agents had sprayed Novichok onto the front door handle of their home. Months later, a local man found a used perfume bottle from a donation bin and gave it to his partner. Neither of them knew the bottle contained the leftover Novichok from the previous attack. When she sprayed it on her wrists, she died within days, and even her husband was gravely affected. In 2020, Alexei Nalvani, Russia's most prominent opposition leader, fell gravely ill in the middle of a flight. He made an emergency landing in Germany, where doctors identified Novichok as the poison. Navalny survived, but only after weeks in intensive care. Across every one of these cases, there is a hauntingly consistent pattern. Victims are poisoned in the most ordinary settings. Trace amounts of Novichok are all it takes. And detection often comes too late, if at all. However, these are just the cases we know about, because they all share one crucial factor. There were survivors. It's impossible to know how many other cases where exposure was fatal have gone completely undetected. And this is why Novichok is the perfect poison. You'd think a substance this deadly would be easy to spot, but Novichok is designed to be the opposite, undetectable, untraceable, and precise. So how does something so toxic stay invisible? To answer that, we have to understand how it works. Novichok belongs to a family of chemicals known as organophosphates, a class of compounds designed to disrupt the most vital functions in the human body. When the nervous system is functioning normally, the brain sends electrical signals using a chemical messenger called acetylcholine. When a nerve fires, acetylcholine transmits a signal to a muscle or an organ, causing it to contract. Then almost immediately, an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase resets the system and prepares it for the next signal. Novichok breaks that reset switch. It binds to the enzyme and disables it permanently. With nothing to break down the chemical signals, acetylcholine floods the nervous system, triggering a storm of uncontrolled electrical activity. Muscles begin to twitch uncontrollably. Victims drool, vomit, and lose control of bodily functions. Without rapid, specialized medical treatment, they fall into a coma. The muscles required to breathe stop responding, and their organs shut down. The dose of Novichok required to do all of this is almost impossibly small. To comprehend the toxicity of a substance, scientists use a measurement called LD50, which corresponds to the dose needed to kill half of those exposed. For Novichok variants like A234, that number is about 0.2 milligrams, hundreds of times smaller than a grain of salt. This means that a single drop, spray, or sprinkle of Novichok is more than enough to kill dozens of people. And even if someone survives, the suffering often doesn't end. In 1987, a Soviet chemist accidentally inhaled a tiny amount of Novichok during a lab accident. He survived, but for years afterward, he experienced chronic nerve damage, breathing difficulty, cognitive and sensory issues, and intolerable pain, until eventually he died from the long-term effects. However, what makes Novichok truly lethal is not just its sheer toxicity, it's the way it kills silently, leaving no trace behind. 
Since the lethal doses are so small, even modern forensic tools struggle to detect them after use. But in reality, detection begins much earlier, at the point of creation. And even then, Novichok remains invisible. You see, the first versions of Novichok were what's known as unitary agents, fully formed compounds that are always active and ready to use. This makes Novichok deadly, but also unstable and dangerous to transport. That's why during the Cold War, Soviet scientists developed a binary version. Instead of one active compound, Novichok could now be made from two separate, relatively harmless chemicals. Individually, these components can pass through borders, customs, or inspections without raising any eyebrows. Only when they're mixed, typically moments before use, do they become lethal. This binary design makes Novichok easier to smuggle, safer to handle, and far more difficult to trace, making it one of the most sophisticated weapons ever developed. Despite overwhelming evidence, though, Novichok remains surrounded by conspiracy theories. Russian media outlets suggest it was invented by Western governments to frame the Soviet Union. But the facts disagree. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons has verified Novichok's existence, and independent laboratories in Germany, Sweden, and the UK have tested samples. The most direct evidence comes from the chemist who exposed the Foliant program back in 1992. He was arrested by Russian authorities for revealing classified information. That arrest in itself was an admission. Another theory suggests that Novichok is not as lethal as it's made out to be. Skeptics point to survivors like Sergei and Yulia Skripal, or Alexei Navalny, but we hear about these cases precisely because the victims received rapid, world-class medical care and lived. Their doses may have been imperfect or degraded, and even then, the outcomes were grim. Long-term nerve damage, lasting cognitive effects, and permanent health issues. And because Novichok is designed to be nearly undetectable, we may never know how many successful attacks have gone unnoticed. Survivors make headlines. Perfect assassinations don't. However, perhaps the most concerning theory about Novichok is where it stands today. On paper, the program ended decades ago, and in 2017, Russia officially declared that it had destroyed all of its declared chemical weapons stockpiles, a claim verified by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. However, in 2020, when Alexei Navalny was targeted, multiple laboratories across Europe confirmed that the substance used to poison him was a new variant of Novichok, one that had never been seen before. This does not prove that the program is still active, but it strongly suggests that someone might still be developing, refining, and using Novichok. Navalny publicly accused Vladimir Putin of personally ordering the hit, which the Russian government denies. In 2024, he died in a Russian prison under suspicious conditions. His official death notice states his cause of death as sudden death syndrome, but many believe Novichok was involved. Conspiracy theories thrive on doubt, but Novichok is real and it's lethal. If it still is being developed today, it would mean the world's most undetectable, most deadly poison is not a relic of the past, but a weapon being sharpened for the future. In war, things are never black and white. While the Soviet Union was developing Novichok, the United States was working on MK Ultra a top-secret mind-control program that was no less cruel. 